All right, guys, we're gonna go over how to use this. First of all, you have an electric tongue jack here. There's an up and down button here and then a light at night. So if you're docking with your truck at night or something, you can turn it on right here. Uh, right here, you have your two uh, propane bottles. To access them, you just lift this right off and then you have your access to your propane. Just make sure whichever tank you're using, you have that arrow pointed towards it. If that tank runs out, you're gonna turn off the gas there, open this gas up, flip it over so the arrow is pointed at the other tank, then you should be good to go. Right behind this is the location of the battery box and battery. Hopefully you don't ever need to get in there for anything, but if you need to access the battery, that's where it would be. And then just to the right of that, back in the corner is a battery disconnect for if it's in storage and things like that. Um, as we come around, it has a large storage area. This is where you're gonna find some gear, like your sewer hose, water hose, all that stuff goes right in here. It's, you can put camping gear in there, it's a huge space. Um, as we come around, you do have electric stabilizer jacks. You just hit the extend retract button. They come down, they do not usually come down together. One will come down, it'll hit the ground. Once it starts getting pressure, the other side will come down and stabilize. These are stabilizers, they're not a leveling system. So that's, there's a big difference. These just come down, they touch the ground. That way, if you're walking inside, the trailer's not wobbly or bouncing around or anything like that. Just remember, very important, prior to leaving your campsite, you wanna raise those guys up. Always walk around and, and look underneath the trailer before you pull away, just to make sure everything's up out of the way. The last thing you wanna do is bend one of those jacks. They're pretty expensive to switch out because they are electric. Um, there's a huge awning on this. These are very expensive. We recommend if you're not sitting underneath it, have it closed. Um, if it's windy, rainy, stormy, anything like that at all, you don't want this guy out and they retract pretty slow. So if a storm's coming, go ahead and close it up prior to that storm getting there. They cost about 1,900 bucks to replace. So just be careful with them. Um, you, you just don't wanna break one because they are expensive. As we come around, we're gonna show you how to get into the unit. You're gonna pop the door open. What we want you to do is open it all the way 180 degrees, just like this. You have solid steps here, which are really nice. There's a pull lever that's blue. You'll pull it and a handle, and all you do is you pull it and it's gonna rotate down. There are a couple more things on this. Each leg can be individually adjusted to the right height of the ground. So you're gonna push this blade in, raise it up, lower it. Uh, there's several notches uh, just to make sure you're all level uh, at your campground. Now, when this is down, there's something you really wanna make sure of. You wanna make sure this is flush right here. You don't want it not level in this to be higher. You want it completely flush. That way, when you come to close this door, it closes properly. If it is not flush and this is up and you try to close the door, it can bend the door and, and actually make it not close uh, and, and it could damage it. So just make sure you don't tweak anything like that. Pretty important. So when you're closing it, once again, same thing, you wanna make this 180 degrees open. And we tell you that because when you go to close it, if it's not completely closed, it'll scrape. There's a big, hold on there. See this, how it sticks out like this? If this isn't completely 180 degrees, it'll hit and you can't close the door. So just be careful with that. You're gonna close it, pull that lever, lock it in, then you can go ahead and shut your door. We always recommend when you're traveling, you lift this up just like this and actually swing it across so it locks the door into place while you're driving. You don't want the door to pop open on you or something. Um, there are some electrical outlets around the RV. Just remember, anytime you wanna use any major appliances, you need to be plugged in to shore power or running a generator, okay? We're gonna come around, you have your rear stabilizers here, same thing, extend, retract. One will come down, it touches the ground, then the other one starts to come down. Just remember to put them up before you drive away. As we come to the back, this is the business area of this guy. You have your um, rear gate here. To access this, it's really simple. You're just gonna push this in, rotate it around, do the same thing on this side, and then you're gonna actually, it's got a big spring here, and you're gonna lower it down softly, hit the ground, then you can get your toys in there. It's a pretty simple system. Like I said, you just lift up, you twist it just like this up out of the way, make sure that's completely out of the way, then you can use the door. Same thing when you go to close it, make sure this is up out of the way, then you close your door, swing it right back around, you're gonna kinda lock it in, pull down on it and you can lock these uh, when you're traveling, okay? As we come around to the backside, there is a fueling station here. Um, just make sure um, it's regular fuel only because this runs the generator and also it's got a fueling station. This is kind of how you turn it on and all that kind of stuff. There's a, a barcode there you can scan with your phone and it'll tell you how to use it, all that kind of stuff. Here's where you'd put the fuel in. 
Uh, we recommend just for a normal weekend, if you're just going out, about 10 to 15 gallons is good. It holds a lot more than that, um, but, but that's usually good just for a weekend, okay? Um, as we come around here, we're gonna talk about uh, your water situation. You have city water connect here. You have your water tank fill here. And then um, you don't really need to worry about this, but if you needed to winterize, this is where you put that in. Um, also, there's one more, a little bit more forward, um, but we'll go over that. That's for dumping the tanks. Um, we, if you're ever gonna use city water, you always wanna use a pressure regulator with that. We always recommend you just fill it up here. And then anytime you're using it, just turn the water pump inside on and uh, it's always gonna have the right water pressure, okay? Uh, holds pretty, uh, pretty substantial amount of water for a trailer. Um, so that's really nice. Um, also right here is your power cord connect. This is what's gonna plug in at a park. You have your big power cord, you screw it on. The other end screws in at the park. If for some reason you screw this in and you're like, I don't have any power whatsoever, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is the breaker at the RV park. You need to make sure if you're parking into a pedestal, you have turned the breaker on. We get calls all the time, nothing's working, we're plugged in. We say, hey, go check that breaker on the power pedestal. Sure enough, everything kicks right on, okay? So just uh, be aware of that. Now we're gonna get into dumping. Right down here is your dump area. You have a black and gray pole valve. The black one is for the sewer, and then the gray is for like the dirty shower water, sink water. You get a big sewer hose, you're gonna unscrew the cap, screw it on. The other end of that hose goes into the dump station. You'll pull the gray one first, let it, or sorry, the black one first, let it drain out. Also right above here, right here, you can plug water in with a hose. That's gonna flush out your black tank. So you wanna plug in here, run water through it, and that's gonna clean out the black tank. Just remember, very important, don't run water through that unless the valve is open. You don't wanna have it backflow or backfill. If that's closed, the tank will fill up there's only one way out right through the toilet coming up. So just make sure you don't ever walk away from it. And you always just have the black handle open if you're running water through it. Turn it off, do all that, disconnect it, close it. And then you're gonna pull the gray water that kind of cleans out your hose for you, okay? Uh, here's a little light here in case you need it. And then this is your generator bay area. Um, you don't really need to get into that for anything, okay? Well, let's head on inside. We wanna show you how to use the inside. All right, guys, we're gonna go over how to use this. First of all, the top area right here, these are all light switches, and a couple of these bottom ones are. And then you get into your water pump and your water heater. There's one that says electric and one that says gas. We always recommend you just use the gas that's gonna run off of propane. You have your awning extend and retract button. Up here, you have a max fan that's up on top. Um, it's a vent fan. Um, you can turn it on, off, and change the speeds. Uh, you do have your bed lift control here, and then this is your main light switch. So that one's important if you're showing up at night and you wanna see the lights. Go ahead and click it on right there. Um, as we come around, there is a stereo here. And then there's also a generator. Um, this is how you would start it. Um, you hold it down, it primes it. Once it lights up green, you push the top and hold it till the generator gets going. And then to turn it off, you're gonna do the reverse. You're just gonna hold the bottom one down till it completely shuts off. Then you're good to go. So this toy hauler is great. It's got some uh, like really great features. The best feature in this toy hauler is this huge cargo area. You can get about any toy in here you need to. Um, this bed lift comes down, everything like that. Um, I'm gonna go over how to use the sofa and, the, and they turn into sleepers. So all you do, first of all, they latch to the wall. You're gonna open up your legs just like this, both legs. And then you're gonna unbuckle it here. And then it just folds down. From this point, you're now into a sleeping configuration. This is great. You can even get an adult on here, but it's really good for a kid. Um, and then what you wanna do is to turn this into a couch. You kinda just taco it. I say taco it, but you kinda just fold it up into each other just like this and you rotate it and you push it right back down um, and it sets it to a nice couch area. Same thing on the other side. So this is a great area. It's awesome. Uh, you can leave the bed down. You can put it up what, on the top bunk, but it's really great. We're gonna move on to the uh, kitchen area. Over here, um, you have a small kitchen area, but it works great. Um, sink, double burners. Um, underneath the fridge here is your breaker panel. If something's not working electrically, we always recommend you check there, make sure the breakers aren't tripped or anything. And then this is an electric fridge. These are really nice. All you need to do is turn it right to, the, if, you're, if you're dry camping, you're gonna go to off-grid mode, and then it'll start getting cold for you. 
If you're at an RV park or plugged in, you can just run it normal. But if you're dry camping, you do want it on off-grid mode. These uh, fridges, fridge and freezer combos are huge. It's one of the benefits of using electric is it gives you a ton of capacity. We're gonna head on back here. We wanna show you a couple things. First off, I wanna go over the air conditioning control. Right here, this is the air conditioner and heater. To turn it on, you're gonna hit the, the horizontal button. It's gonna cycle through heat, fan, and air conditioner and off. Then you have your temperature controls just like your house would have. So um, anytime you're not using it, you can turn it off, but you can always cycle through there. I'm gonna send you into the bathroom and we're gonna take a look at that stuff. First off, we're gonna start with the uh, toilet. It's a foot flush uh, flusher. So what you do in an RV toilet is you actually hold it down halfway. The uh, bowl is gonna fill with water and then you're gonna handle your business. And then uh, when you're all done, you're gonna push it completely down with the foot pedal and it'll actually flush it through. In the corner, we have our GFCI outlet. If an outlet or something's not working, you always wanna check that. And then we also have a great um, shower here. It, it's a massive shower. This is one of the best bathrooms and largest sizes. Very comfortable, you can change clothes, you can do a lot of stuff uh, that you can't do in smaller RVs. Um, we're gonna move on from the bathroom and head into the bedroom area. We're gonna step in here. This has a great bedroom setup. Every corner by, has built-in nightstands with charging ports. So you can charge your phone, all that kind of stuff at night. It's got a nice light, huge sleeping area. This is really comfortable. Um, it has a air, air fed through the ducted system here. It's really nice. Um, so you guys are gonna like this, it's super nice. The bed's soft and great. All right guys, so we've gone over how to use this RV. If you have any questions, we can go over those when you come to pick it up. We're excited that you're gonna be having this one and we can't wait to see you soon.